Melissa Harris Perry, if you could talk to those jurors, what would you want to know? You know, again, I want us to be a little bit careful about laying this burden at the feet of these six jurors. They, they certainly had a, a, a set of decisions to make, um, but those decisions had everything to do with the case that was presented to them. And it also had everything to do with Florida law. And I think this is part of what um, Reverend Sharpton was saying that is so important. The thing that makes this possible, this entire case from beginning to end, that both emboldens George Zimmerman to carry that gun, get out and follow that child, ultimately brandish that gun and kill Trayvon Martin, the willingness of the Sanford police to walk away from an arrest initially, and then even the instructions that this jury had to be given and the, and the terms under which Zimmerman had to be tried have everything to do with the stand your ground law and with the ways that this state has chosen to take the second amendment and turn it into something that is not just about the rights of individuals to own guns but this kind of affirmative right to actually discharge those firearms sort of based on your own feelings of threat your own and and what we know is that the stand your ground law the question was asked earlier what if george zimmerman had been black well well we sort of know that answer right because marissa alexander an african-american woman in florida who shot a ceiling Let's be very clear. She shot a warning shot into the ceiling when her admittedly abusive husband, who had physically abused her on multiple occasions and was threatening her at that moment, as, she, as he was walking toward her, she shot into the ceiling and she got 20 years in jail in Florida, 20 years for shooting a ceiling. George Zimmerman is free tonight, and we know without any doubt that he shot and killed Trayvon Martin. So I think we know the answer to what would happen had George Zimmerman been African-American.